So uh, you have, you've joined us, uh, like I said, for the next installment of uh, Living Between the Lines slash Short Talks, Hot Topics. And this month is on finances um, in terms of, you know, wh- what does the Bible say about finance and money? Um, you know, what does the Bible tell us in terms of how we approach it, how we use it, um, and how we walk that out? So we'll get into the questions. Can we pray first? Are you that worried? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, let's pray. Father, as uh, we come to you, we pray that you would open up your heart to us, that you would speak to us, and that our hearts would be in tune with your heart. Uh, we thank you that uh, we, have, we have sung here this evening that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And we pray that, that you would enable that to happen for each one of us here this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. I think next time we do a series like this, we should call it Wisdom with the Wise One. (laughs) (laughs) I would would suggest that we change seats then. (laughs) (laughs) First question, and the most important and deeply spiritual one, is uh, can we do the lottery? (laughs) Now, let me, let, me, let, me, let me just say this. In, in the notes, he said, we'll start with someone, something very humorous. And I, I thought, well, that's, that's not really funny. But I do remember when I was a young pastor going to, to visit someone um, one Thursday evening. And the man of the house was not a Christian. And the lady, was, she was out the back and she was hanging out washing. And... Um, sat and talked with, with Jimmy. That, that was his name. So I sat and talked with Jimmy for a while. And, and we were going through a building program in the church. We were building a brand new church. And uh, he said to me, Pastor, I have a wee question for you. You see, if I get the pools up on Saturday, would you accept a donation to the church? And I sat and looked at him, and I, I didn't know, didn't know what, really know what to say. And then, and then I remembered something that, that Samuel Brangle had said. And he, he was the founder of the, not, yeah, it was Brangle from the, the Salvation Army. And, and the Salvation Army was accused of taking tainted money. And he said this, there's only one thing wrong with tainted money. They're tainted enough of it. <laughs> and he said we'll take all the tainted money and sanctify it and use it for the Lord's glory right so I'm sitting thinking about all of that and um, <laughs> uh, I said to Jimmy Jimmy if I find out that you've won the pools this Saturday I'll be ruined with a wheelbarrow on Monday <laughs> now just at that his wife walked through the door and he said, Anne, come here. The pastor says it's all right to do the pulls. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd been having this big discussion about whether it was, it was ethical or not. And, then, and so I, I was landed in the middle of all of that. Um, but let me, let me just explain to you as a church and as the Church of the Nazarene, this, this is our position here. And I'm going to have to get my glasses on to read that. Um, lotteries and other forms of gambling, whether legal or illegal. That's the title of it. The church holds that the final result of these practices is detrimental both to the individual and society. And so we, we discourage our people from doing the lottery. Okay. All right. Next question. What are some of the basic principles and guidelines in the scripture on how we earn, spend, and think about money? Well, um, I'm, I'm not too sure whether I've, I've covered this um, question in the terms of earning money. Um, the Bible says that the workman is, is worth his hire. I think that in the biblical principle there is that, that if we're employed by someone else, we should look upon our employment as we're working for the Lord. And, and we, we, we live our lives like that. 
Um, other people may, may slack off early, other people may come into work late. And, um, but we as Christians should set an example. All right. Now, I, I hadn't even thought about that part of the question, but the principles, I want to, to lift a, a verse of scripture, which I reckon is one of the most misquoted verses of scripture. And it comes from um, 1 Timothy 6.10. And it says this, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierce themselves with many griefs. Now, people will tell you this, from this verse of scripture, that money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. It's not. And the Bible doesn't say that money is the root of all evil. Money can be used for good, or it can be used for evil. It's our attitude to money that is, is good or evil. And so it's, it's not that money in itself is evil. You can use money for good or you can use it for evil. All right? Now, I had a, had a good look at this and, and I, J.B. Phillips' translation of this, if you, if you want to have a look at, at, at a translation, just, just Google um, 1, 1 Timothy 6.10 and, and put J.B. Phillips. And, and, and you'll get this translation, all right? So there are three parts to it. So you follow me, Emma, when we're going through this. Uh, for men who set their hearts on being wealthy, expose themselves to temptation. They fall into one of the world's traps and lay themselves open to all sorts of silly and wicked desires which are quite capable of utterly ruining and destroying their souls. For loving money leads to all kinds of evil. And some men in the struggle to be rich have lost their faith and caused themselves untold agonies of mind. Now, now Jesus, when he, when he was talking about principles, he, he talked about you know, the, the rich farmer who built more barns and wanted to make himself wealthy. And, and Jesus made this statement, what shall it profit a man if he gains everything that he wants, if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? And, and Paul's picking this up in uh, 1 Timothy 6.10 and, and he's saying exactly the same thing. If you get the wrong um, attitude towards money and, and you, be, you want more and more and more for yourself and your attitude to money is, is wrong, there's, there's a chance that it can, can lead you away from your own personal faith and trust in God. It, it's almost like an independence kind of thing. One of the, um, one of the curses, I think, of, of the Western world today is that we, we no longer need to pray the Lord's Prayer because the Lord's Prayer says that, that we should ask the Lord for our daily bread. Well, the truth is, if we don't provide our own daily bread, the state will provide it for us. And, and we, we have lost our dependency on God. And Paul's warning against all of that. He's, he's saying, look, have a right attitude towards money and realize that, that God is the one who provides for you and, and create an, an attitude of dependence on him. Now, on the, the screen, the Apostle Paul says this about his own life. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, and here's, here's the ethic of, of working hard, we must help the weak, remembering the words that the Lord Jesus himself said. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And so if you work hard and you have enough money, you, you, should, you should develop an attitude whereby you become generous with your money and help those who are less fortunate um, than yourself. And I, I think maybe the other principle that I want to bring out um, is from Proverbs 22.7. And it says this, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Now it's the last part. 
that, that I really want to try and, and emphasize here because <clears throat> we believe that, that Jesus is the emancipator. Jesus is the liberator. Jesus breaks the bonds of sin and our bondage to sin. I hear something here that in the Old Testament that clearly tells us that, that if, you, if you run and borrow money to have a lifestyle that's beyond your means, you become a slave to the lender. And I don't, I don't think God wants his people to be in bondage to anyone or anything. We've been set free by Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, so those are some of the principles. Okay, so what's interesting I found about um, the series is that it, there's so many crossovers with other topics that we've talked about. Um, and if you remember back, the first one we did was on marriage and relationships. And so out of then this conversation or, or kind of this, this cross between finances and relationship and married, I, you and Ruth have been married. What I put down initially was 30 years because I didn't want to offend you and say... Over, over 30 over years. Over 30 years. Um, I didn't want to make any statements on you. Uh, so <laughs> you, you said that you're, you're married over or 43 years? 40, 40, 44 this year. 44 years, right? So I guess nearly five, four and a half decades of marriage. And so the question following on from that is... Would you have any advice for married couples um, when it comes to finances, particularly maybe <laughs> even young couples who are just starting out in marriage? Um, what would your advice be when it comes to, to dealing with finances? Let Ruth do it. 